I don't see anything but a lot of racing cars. <laughs> well, that's the whole idea, Lieutenant. You don't see it with your eye. You see it with your subconscious mind, which is quicker than the eye. That's why it's called subliminal. You sure it's there? <laughs> sure. Look. I'll be a son of a gun. <laughs> There it is. I never would have known. Gee, that thing makes you hungry just to look at it. Yeah, well, that's the whole idea. If you want to sell hamburgers. But wouldn't it be better if people could get a better look at the hamburger? Well, it could be run slow enough to give an audience a brief but clear glimpse of it. But look. Look what that would do to the racing film. Yeah, I could see what I would louse up the movie, but... Uh... I mean, I can't see how one frame of a hamburger going by so fast. How's that going to make anybody hungry? That depends how hungry you are to start with. The thing is, Lieutenant, that the subliminal cut isn't used just once. Now, you can work that into a film in a dozen places. Nobody would be the wiser. Yet it has a cumulative effect in the viewer's subconscious. Hello, Lieutenant. Oh, good evening, Dr. Kevlar. What are you doing here at this hour? Well, your cutter here was just explaining to me how subliminal cuts work. I hope you don't mind. No, certainly not. We're always happy to help out the police department here at the Institute. Uh, did you make those changes in the transit film? Yes, they work just fine. Good. Do you want to see them here or up on the big screen? Well, no, you, uh, you can take I hope the... I I'm not in the way. Oh, no, no, not at all. You can take the film on upstairs. The narrator's up there now. He's waiting. Oh, okay. We may want to make some changes. And later on, after we've run it for narration. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, Lieutenant, what got you interested in subliminal cuts? You did, Doc. I did? How? I got home this afternoon, and I started reading that book of yours, The Mind Stringing Out of Pulling. Forget about it. You're a genius. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that. But it's very nice to hear. I got to that part about the popcorn. I closed the book, I sat there with my mouth open. You know what I'm talking about, the part about the popcorn? Yes, I'm not likely to forget it. You invented something I never heard of. I'm over 40. Subliminal cuts. Who ever heard of a subliminal cut? Let me see if I've got that right. You took one frame, was it one frame? Yes. Of a picture of buttered popcorn and cut it into the middle of a movie and it went by so fast that everybody in the audience watching the movie, they never saw it. Is that the way it went? Yes. But all of a sudden, everybody in the theater, they wanted to eat popcorn? That's the way it works. I'll be a son of a gun. And it says there that, in some cases, the sale of popcorn in the theater is almost double. It also says that it was outlawed by the Consumer Trade Commission. Yeah. Uh, that part was too bad, but it was a whale well of an idea all the same. <laughs> Well, I hope the brilliance of my work is not interfering with your investigation, Lieutenant. Could you help me with that? What? The investigation? Could I pick your brain on that matter? Certainly. You see these two cards? I got two just like these, taped on a mirror in my bathroom. You know where else I got them? Pasted on the windshield of my car, plus these two. Keep them in my pocket. Reminders. Go ahead, read them. Why did Mr. Norris leave the screening room? How did the murderer know the precise time that Norris was going to leave the screening room? Those are key questions, aren't they? Well, yes, I'd say they were fundamental. I'm pointed in the right direction? Obviously. I don't know why you need all your little cards, but if you do, I guess it's all right. Okay, now let's assume that whoever killed Mr. Norris was already in your suite of offices, didn't come from outside the building. All right, let's make that assumption. Okay, shoot. I beg your pardon? Go ahead, I'm waiting. Can you help me? To do what? To answer my question, sir. How did the murderer know the precise time that Mr. Norris was going to leave the screening room? I wouldn't have the faintest idea. 
Can't come up with anything. Lieutenant, how would it be possible to know when a man is going to get up out of his chair and leave a screening room? That's impossible. No, I just thought that with your knowledge of behavior and motivation, that's why I asked. I know it's a tough question. I believe that whoever killed Vic Norris came from outside the building, and I've already told you who I think might have been involved in that. I know, but if we could just stick with the assumption that it was done by somebody inside the building, um... Uh, frankly, I'm disappointed. When I read about the popcorn and the way you used those subliminal cuts, I felt sure you'd be able to help me. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Oh, no need to apologize. Fact is, I owe you an apology. You do? Yeah. Might as well own up to it. I stole something that belonged to you. You stole something from me? Yeah, nothing serious. Uh, fact is, the night of the murder, I was hungry. I saw some of your caviar around. And I took the liberty of helping myself. Just thought I'd mention it. Don't be silly. As long as you enjoyed it. That's the funny part. I didn't enjoy it. Too salty. And you know, I didn't notice it when I was eating it. But when I went to the projectionist later on, I remember, I felt a little thirsty. All of a sudden, I wanted something to drink. So he had some iced tea there. Thank goodness. Oh, that reminds me. Take a look. Autopsy report. I thought that if I took caviar and it made me thirsty, I figured maybe it would make him thirsty. So you ordered an autopsy? That's very stupid, Lieutenant. Thank you very much, Doctor. It was the only way that I could find out whether or not Mr. Norris ate any caviar. According to this report, he did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Quite a bit. Pretty big eater. A uh, doctor? Yes. In the light of this new information, I was wondering whether or not you could find it in yourself to be more helpful at this point. If the man was thirsty and he was subjected to several subliminal cuts of, say, a tall, cool drink that would cause him to get up and leave his screening room and go to find the nearest water fountain, is that what you mean? I had something like that in mind, yes. And that could happen. Oh, yes, indeed. Oh. Thank you very much. You've been very helpful. Not at all. You're an interesting man, Lieutenant. Very interesting. I take it that's a compliment. Yes, it is. However, you will have to take it a bit further. You may really be onto something. You have to take the next step. Uh, what is that, sir? Look at the film. Examine it carefully. See if there are any subliminal cuts. Oh, of course. I should have realized you've already done that. What did you find? No splices. Oh, that's too bad. What a shame. Such a good idea. Could have been two prints. Two prints? Well, that's an interesting notion, too. If I were you, I'd get busy and find that second print. Your entire case could rest on that. Doctor, I don't think I'm going to find the second print. Really? Why not? I think that the criminal in this case is much too intelligent to leave that kind of evidence around. Of course, I'm going to check all the film duplicating labs. But I got a feeling this guy did his own duplicating. That must be very frustrating for you, Lieutenant. Just one more thing. 